would you dare to live in a haunted house? This man just got off the train because it was too late. He had no choice but to accept the house recommended by the agent. Although the house looked old, the thought of leaving after two months of work, and the decent service provided by the agent, made him not pay much attention. But as soon as the man was sent into the house and the door closed, a wicked smile appeared on the agent's lips. Although those old men and women said the room was haunted, as a modern young person, he naturally didn't believe it. Looking at the pitch black corridor, he cursed the superstitions of old people. How could such things exist in this world? Little did he know, that there were a pair of hands slowly reaching out behind him. Meanwhile, the tenant in the room was also experiencing terrifying things. In the darkness, a ghost was silently approaching. Time quickly moved to the next day. The shady agent was awakened by a punch from someone. Standing in front of him were Granny Long and a police officer investigating the case. It turned out that he was pushed down the stairs and fainted last night. The tenant also died last night due to a heart attack. Yet this rundown building had no surveillance cameras. Granny Long's face darkened. Why was the haunted house rented out? Now it has caused the tenant's death. The agent, who originally didn't believe in such things, broke out in a cold sweat after hearing this. The area around the building was filled with onlookers, and beyond the crowd stood a man. The man's name was Tang Ka. He was a member of the Demonic Spirit City Bureau, responsible for investigating this mysterious murder case. But he couldn't perceive any demonic energy or aura. It seemed that this mission was quite challenging. At this moment, he formed a seal with his hands and activated the golden nether eye. This was a secret technique of Taoism, possessing strong detection and auxiliary capabilities. It allowed him to observe the colors of the souls around him. Blue represented ordinary humans. White represented deceased humans. Yellow represented individuals like the protagonist. And red represented demonic spirits. At this moment, golden light flowed in his left eye. Under the activation of the eye technique, the entire building unexpectedly appeared in a transparent form. But after scanning it, no target was found. However, the more challenging the task, the more interested he became. Just then, a voice called out to him, and he turned to see a sniffling chubby boy. The chubby boy speculated that Tang Ka's hand gesture earlier was from Naruto, and proudly told him that he was a fan too. He then extended his palm and demonstrated it, followed by performing the Great Waterfall Jutsu. Then, he looked proudly at the side. But Tang Ka was nowhere to be found, and his lollipop disappeared as well. At this moment, Tang Ka was sitting on the rooftop behind them, smirking contemptuously. He secretly thought, annoying little brat, what I just used was a ninjutsu, it was Taoism art, you know. Then he thought about the mission at hand, not expecting the target to be so well hidden. It seemed he needed to think of a way to capture them upon returning. Once found, they would undoubtedly receive a severe beating. This beautiful woman actually wants to rent a haunted house for live streaming, even after being told that there was a recent death there yesterday. She is not afraid at all. The agent reluctantly handed her the keys, but didn't dare to go up herself. The woman was in the room, eating instant noodles, while an evil hand quietly reached out from under the table. Then it grabbed towards her leg, but the woman suddenly stood up, remembering that she hadn't put up her idol's poster yet. Not only on the door, she also put up a talisman on the window to ward off evil spirits. At this moment, the light on the roof flickered a few times and went out, and a creaking sound came from the nearby cabinet. The woman seemed frightened, but she gathered her courage and approached, shouting for the person inside to come out. At that moment, the cabinet door shook and opened a crack, revealing a sinister and terrifying face gradually. So, you're here. The beautiful woman's face suddenly changed, and she quickly stepped forward, grabbing the cabinet door and forcefully opening it. Then she unzipped her back, and a rooster with glowing red eyes flew out. This rooster is called Kaw Kaw, a four-clawed crow that can make any demonic spirit appear. Kaw Kaw understood that it was time for its appearance, so it flapped its wings and flew into the cabinet. The woman pressed the door shut with force and immediately, there were continuous impacts and desperate screams from inside. The cabinet door finally couldn't withstand the pressure and broke open. Kaw Kaw flew out and was put back into the backpack, and then a withered and grim ghost crawled out from inside. It then approached the woman, letting out an angry roar. I'm going to devour you. Immediately, it opened its mouth wide, preparing to bite down, revealing a mouthful of dense fangs, which looked terrifying. However, the next second, it was sent flying by a punch, heavily crashing onto the ground. Now, it was the ghost's turn to be afraid, nervously asking who she was. The woman smirked at this moment, drawing a circle in the air, and her disguise slowly faded away. I am Tang Ka, the Demonic Spirit City Bureau's Lu Sang City Demon Catching Champion. The ghost's eyes flashed with fear, never expecting that she was a member of the Demonic Spirit City Bureau. But Tang Ka didn't pay much attention to him. Indeed, this ghost's hiding ability was stronger than average, but in terms of strength, Tang Ka could handle him with just one finger. The ghost became timid at this moment, wanting to hide and escape, 
but was interrupted by the abilities of the four-clawed crow. Several wounds appeared on its body, and it immediately tried to rush out the door. However, as soon as it touched the poster on the door, the talisman behind the poster emitted a dazzling golden light, and it was electrocuted, revealing its true form. Tangka also didn't expect this ghost to be so weak, he didn't even have to make a move, and its true form turned out to be a short and chubby little ghost. Seeing its frightened and trembling appearance, Tang Ka extended his middle finger and gave it a tap on the head. This poor little demonic spirit said that it couldn't leave, it needed to wait for someone here. Then it recounted its own experience, originally living in ancient times with a naturally timid personality. The only thing it was good at was hiding. Because of this, it was recruited by the demonic spirit city bureau. Later, during a cooperative operation, they fell into a trap and everyone was wiped out, leaving only it alive but it also suffered heavy injuries, so it hid in this cabinet and fell asleep. When it woke up, it had unexpectedly arrived in the modern era. Later, a blind old woman discovered it, and they began living together, and she treated it kindly. But one day, the old woman fell asleep on the ground and couldn't be woken up no matter how they called her. Then a few people came and carried her away, so this little demonic spirit decided to wait here continuously, waiting for the old woman to wake up and return. Hearing this, Tang Ka basically understood the sequence of events, and also realized that the old woman had already passed away. Unable to tolerate its rambling any longer, he interrupted it, and opened the Demonic Spirit City Bureau software to scan its information. The result displayed on it, Charcoal Ghost, belongs to an extinct species. Extinction period, during the Northern Border Era, cause of extinction, killed by demonic spirits. After reading it, Tang Ka sarcastically stared at the little demonic spirit and said, Although this job isn't very lucrative, capturing you is quite interesting, and extinct demonic spirits are very valuable in the black market. Upon hearing the words black market, the little demonic spirit instantly imagined horrifying scenes, and it started crying and struggling in fear. Seeing this, Tang Ka stopped joking around, picked it up, and explained that he wouldn't sell it, and that the old woman wouldn't return either. From now on, it wouldn't be lonely, scared, or helpless, because he would protect it. Charcoal Ghost, from now on, I'll name you Little Black. The little demonic spirit, moved by someone willing to accept it, had tears swirling in its eyes. Then it nodded earnestly in agreement. Immediately, Tang Ka took out the embroidered cage and captured Little Black inside. Amidst a series of screams, Little Black was completely sucked into the embroidered cage. It thought that Tang Ka had intentionally deceived and trapped it, shouting that humans are all liars. But Tang Ka didn't explain anything. He took out his phone and looked at the mission submission interface, clicked on failed, and concealed Little Black's whereabouts. Meanwhile, at a busy construction site, several workers were discussing excitedly about discovering an antique item. It looked like a jar, estimated to weigh hundreds of kilograms, wrapped with two thick ropes on the outside. The workers were curious, saying it resembled a broken wine jar from their own homes, while others said it looked like a jar for vegetables. At that moment, one of the workers stepped forward and said, Why speculate? Just open it and find out. Then he approached the jar, and saw that the lid was covered in densely packed runes. The worker couldn't understand them, so he just lifted the lid with one hand. As the lid fell to the ground, the runes gradually disappeared into the air. After a while, the worker showed no reaction, and the others called out and were about to go over and check. But they didn't know that at that moment, blood was flowing from the worker's seven orifices, and his whole body resembled a withered corpse. The vitality from his body was flowing downward into this eerie giant jar. On a rainy night, a girl was riding her bike frantically on the road. She had finally received a big order, with only five minutes left, but she was about to be late. At this moment, she stepped on the gas even harder. Luckily, there weren't many people on this road at night, so at this speed, she could definitely make it on time. But just then, she collided with something. The girl was thrown off and heavily fell to the ground. She didn't understand why she would crash into something, when she clearly didn't see anything ahead. As the rain grew heavier, a ferocious monster slowly emerged in the middle of the road. This girl is called Zhuang Xiaoran. Her mother abandoned her when she was young, and her father also passed away, forcing her to stay with relatives. She wants to save money, and make her mother regret abandoning her. But for now, she has only saved half. As long as she works a little harder, she should be able to achieve it soon. Her aunt came over early in the morning, saying that she didn't get up in the morning, and would be back late at night, unable to help with anything, but still shamelessly freeloading here. But when under someone else's roof, one must lower their head. Xuan Xiaoran couldn't argue, she could only think about asking her aunt if there was a place to live. The woman in the living room kept complaining. She initially said it would only be a few days, but now it has been almost half a year. But the man didn't mind, after all, she was his own niece. I don't care about her, who cares about her? 
The woman couldn't reason with him, so she left for work in frustration, and when her aunt left, Shuang Xiaoran finally came out and went to the bathroom. However, while she was washing her face, the door behind her opened a crack. The man looked at Zhuang Xiaoran's body and gave an ambiguous, lecherous smile. Just as Zhuang Xiaoran felt someone behind her while washing her face, she turned her head and saw her uncle standing behind her. He explained that he came in to get some dental floss. Zhuang Xiaoran still felt strange. Even though this was his house, he shouldn't be so casual. Using dental floss as an excuse, the man suddenly got close to Zhuang Xiaoran's body, getting so close that he could even smell the fragrance in her hair. Then he became more and more inappropriate, staring at her body. With ill intentions, he said that he used to play with her when she was a child. He couldn't believe she had grown up so much in the blink of an eye, saying that women change a lot when they turn 18. Even asking about her mobile phone balance of 500,000, a girl coming home so late every day easily leads to suspicions of wrongdoing. Then, leaning closer to Zhuang Xiaoran's ear, he lewdly says, If you need money, just listen to me, and I'll give it to you. At this moment, Zhuang Xiaoran feels very disappointed. She didn't expect her seemingly kind-hearted uncle to be such a despicable person. She doesn't waste words on such disgusting individuals. She turns around and kicks him in the crotch, then leaves in a stylish manner. But now she has to find another place to stay. Zhuang Xiaoran walks on the road, pulling her luggage, and sees a happy and warm family of three. Her expression can't help but appear a little desolate, but then she adjusts her state of mind, her eyes determined, encouraging herself. Today, she has to work hard to earn money. In order to achieve this goal, she has to take on multiple jobs. At 9 a.m., she works as an intern model. At 1 p.m., she works part-time as a hotel maid. And at 6 p.m., she rides her motorcycle to deliver takeout. As Zhuang Xiaoran walks away, the apprentice beside her doesn't understand why such a lovely girl would choose to deliver takeout. The master smiles and answers. Although I don't know why she works so hard, I'm sure she loves motorcycles very much. So for her, delivering takeout may be her way of decompression in daily life. The scene switches to a pedestrian street. Tang Ka looks at the dazzling array of snacks before him, unsure of what to choose. And coincidentally, the delivery girl Zhuang Xiaoran rides past him on her motorcycle. At that moment, the black compass at his waist vibrates wildly. Tang Ka opens it curiously to check, but the pointer on it keeps spinning, and then numerous red threads emerge, passing through the bustling crowd ultimately attaching to Zhuang Xiaoran's body. At this moment, Tang Ka recalls what his master said to him when he was a child. Black Compass able to seek out people, items, or demonic spirits, also able to decipher good or bad luck. If red threads emerge, it signifies a calamity. Those who encounter this calamity will undoubtedly die, with no solution in sight. Tang Ka closes the compass and looks towards the direction where the red threads float. There are so many people here, it's not easy to find. Besides, Everyone has their own destiny. Even if he wants to help, there's nothing he can do. Just then, a ringtone comes from his pocket. He takes out his phone and sees that it's an order dispatched from above. Moreover, there's a rare A-level order included. The system prompts, you have the privilege to take this order. Do you want to accept it? Looking at the information on his phone, Tang Ka's face lights up with a big smile. It seems like today is indeed a good day. The scene switches to a construction site. The news about the excavation of a jar spreads like wildfire, and many workers gather to observe. However, strangely enough, the people who first discovered the giant jar are nowhere to be seen. Someone notices something around the jar and upon entering, they discover a mess of clothes and shoes, along with a lot of black liquid on the ground. The workers gradually gather, discussing the disappearance of the people and the clothes. Just then, bubbles emerge from the jar, accompanied by a gurgling sound. The crowd wonders if something is about to surface. As they suspected, a head slowly emerges from the jar, followed by a green glow shooting up. When the workers see it clearly, they freeze in fear, with cold sweat pouring down. Seated on the edge of the jar is a withered corpse with several spirit suppressing coffin nails embedded in its body. Spirit suppressing coffin nails were used by villages in the past to drive away spirits and seal evil spirits. Any spirit struck by them would be unable to commit evil or escape punishment. The workers have never seen anything so eerie. They scatter in all directions, shouting that it's haunted. However, it's already too late. The withered corpse opens its mouth, and the life essence of one of the workers flows out through their eyes and mouth. Then, another worker. Then more and more life essence converges into the mouth of the withered corpse. Not a single worker is spared. Even those who were not present nearby slowly gather towards it, gradually forming a gigantic sphere composed of countless bodies. 
Directly beneath the sphere is the withered corpse squatting at the edge of the jar. As the life essence flows out crazily, the workers deflate like deflated balloons, rapidly withering away and turning into a puddle of black liquid. Only clothes and helmets fall from the air. The withered corpse, as if satisfied, jumps down from the jar and its eyes burst into golden light. It then lets out a long howl towards the sky. With the swirling life essence, its body starts growing flesh from bottom to top, accompanied by cracking sounds as a bony tail emerges. As the tail forms, its entire being erupts with a soaring momentum. Legend has it that there is a monster evolved from a withered corpse that accumulated hatred for over a thousand years. It possesses an indestructible body and a skill to detect the spiritual status of others. Its fleshly body has the miraculous effect of extending one's life and strengthening one's spirit aura. And this monster is named Mummy. As it looks at its own arm, it becomes confused. Who am I? Why have I become like this? Just then, a drop of water falls into its palm, simultaneously awakening the memories deep within its mind. It was a rainy day, two villagers coldly staring at it, followed by being dragged onto a desk. Several people then pounced on it, controlling its body and ruthlessly piercing it with coffin nails. An excruciating pain immediately seared through its entire being, and though it wanted to cry for help, the surroundings erupted in joyful cheers. Meanwhile, a white-haired youth in the distance laughed even more gleefully. The fragmented memories remain incomplete. However, he angrily roars a name, Bo. With the exertion of his muscles, the coffin nail embedded in his back pierces even deeper. Immediately, the coffin nail releases a wave of pressure, causing Mummy to be unable to bear the intense pain and collapse to the ground. Yet, the troubles for Mummy do not end with the coffin nail in his back. There are people approaching from a distance. Mummy promptly activates foresight, a unique ability he possesses. It allows him to observe distant targets, their soul and spiritual aura colors. As his vision extends further, he sees the Tangka rushing towards him. Although he doesn't recognize him, his instincts tell him to escape quickly. Despite his strength being constrained by the coffin nail, the current mummy is incredibly weak. However, he won't sit and wait for his demise. There is a deep resentment in mummy's heart. He wants to find that person and return all the pain he has experienced over the years. Even if it takes a thousand or ten thousand years, he will not give up. Just as he crosses the road, a dazzling light rushes towards him. The two collide, and Zhuang Xiaoran is thrown away. He thought he was being ambushed, but the woman who attacked him is also severely injured. However, there is no time to dwell on these thoughts. At this moment, Mummy senses that the pursuers have arrived nearby, and his current condition is definitely no match for that person. There is only one option now. After making his decision, he slowly approaches Zhuang Xiaoran. To ordinary people, demonic spirits are invisible. They can only see the illusory figures appearing under the influence of rainwater, mistakenly thinking they are experiencing a hallucination. Zhuang Xiaoran, heavily wounded, can no longer hold on and closes his eyes. Mummy has already arrived in front of him. The spirits behind her sway like seaweed and draw closer to her. Immediately, they enter her body. As more and more spirits flow out, Zhuang Xiaoran is completely enveloped. The spirits, like leeches, also penetrate through the wound, beginning the process of repair. They travel along the blood vessels and reach the heart, where they fuse with the cells, causing mutations. After the fusion is complete, Zhuang Xiaoran opens her eyes, revealing pupils that resemble those of a wild beast, appearing eerie. With her awakening, Mummy disappears without a trace, and the coffin nail falls to the ground. Meanwhile, Tang Ka swiftly arrives at the construction site. However, upon seeing the scene around him, he realizes he is too late. The entire construction site has lost any signs of life in such a short time. It's astonishing how many people have died. It seems imperative to find him immediately. Just as he contemplates his next move, the compass on his waist starts vibrating frantically. Meanwhile, the awakened Zhuang Xiaoran has already left the scene, walking stiffly towards the city. At that moment, a lightning bolt flashes, revealing Mummy's features on her face. Walking on her way back, an innocent passing cat looks at her with a perplexed expression, as if it senses something. In the cat's pupils, the girl in front of it gradually transforms into Mummy's true form. Nonchalantly passing by, the girl's back is met with a sinister expression from the cat. I have encountered the rarely seen Mummy in a hundred years. However, she seems very weak at the moment. Thinking this, the cat becomes greedy and turns around pouncing towards the girl. Seizing this opportunity to devour her, the cat's spiritual aura can greatly increase. However, Mummy pays no attention to it. Just as it is about to strike, she suddenly turns her head, coldly staring at it. Then, 
a finger sweeps across, and a dark golden light emerges. Distant streetlights are caught in the aftermath and instantly severed into two pieces. The nearest cat demon is also bisected. It never expected the opponent's strength to be so formidable. Despite appearing weak, they effortlessly harvested it with a single finger. Regret fills its mind, realizing that if it had continued to act cute and adorable, it could have still scraped by for a living. But now, it's too late. Mummy's lips curl slightly, having fused with this body and freed itself from the spirit's oppressing coffin nail. There are no more restraints now. All of Mummy's power has been fully restored. In this moment, they decide to find a place with many people and test their current strength. They crouch down, then leverage their feet to instantly soar into the air, flying towards a distant location. It doesn't take long before they spot a city ahead. A streak of golden light cuts across the sky, and Mummy lands on a rooftop. Looking at the towering skyscrapers and bustling crowds before them, they become momentarily stunned. They don't understand why the people in the city are dressed so provocatively. However, they are certain that the descendants of those villagers must be here, and Mummy intends to eradicate them, ensuring their bloodline ends. With thoughts of revenge, Mummy opens their mouth wide, and a green light flashes within. The people below suddenly clutch their throats, struggling to breathe. Soon, spirits begin to drift out from their bodies, and the range of influence grows larger and larger. Countless spirits from the city converge towards the rooftop, while the perpetrator, Mummy, greedily absorbs this immense spiritual power. Meanwhile, the alarm at the headquarters of the Demonic Spirit City Bureau immediately sounds. Watching the constantly flashing screens in the command room, the crisis escalates as the red area rapidly expands. Commander Han Longkui's expression grows increasingly solemn. She never expected to encounter such a situation right after taking office. Wasn't this assignment supposed to be taken by Tang Ka? Where is that kid now? Even if we could contact him, it's probably too late. It seems we can only bring someone from the other world. Just as she hesitates, a subordinate rushes over to report. The data shows that in less than three minutes, the citizens of Lanshan District will all be dead. Nearby, Tang Ka is the only Class A Demon City officer. His location has been traced, but he probably won't make it in time. Upon hearing this, Han Longkui no longer hesitates. She immediately arranges for rapid communication with the Protector Hall and dispatches two protectors to the incident coordinates. The subordinate, upon receiving the order, exclaims in astonishment, Are we really deploying protectors? A protector is a guard employed by the Lanting Spirit City Protector Hall. Their main responsibilities include maintaining the security of the Lanting Spirit City's prison and handling major matters that affect both the human and spirit worlds. The scene then transitions to the top of a building where Mummy continues to greedily absorb a large amount of spiritual power. Just as she completes the absorption and senses signs of disturbance behind her, she turns her head. She notices a mark appearing on a distant building surface. Then, a red beam of light flashes, revealing the humanoid shadows of two protectors, one fat and one thin, wearing bronze masks. They stand with their hands behind their backs. The fat protector, seeing only a single demonic spirit in front of him, underestimates the situation. They sent both of us? Isn't it an overreaction? On the other hand, the thin protector advises him to be more serious. According to the information provided by humans, the target is a mummy who hasn't appeared in hundreds of years. And surprisingly, it's a woman. Something is suspicious about this. Upon hearing this, the fat protector swiftly moves forward, intending to probe the situation himself. Without hesitation, the fat protector rushes forward at high speed, and his claws cut through the air, leaving behind a yellow light. Mummy doesn't sit idle either. She smiles and immediately propels herself forward with force. In the blink of an eye, her knee strikes the fat protector's face, causing him to be sent flying. Fortunately, he is caught by the iron net at the edge of the building and doesn't fall down. The thin protector remains calm, standing in place. After dealing with the fat protector, Mummy approaches the thin protector. Seems like you're much stronger than him, she remarks. Before she can finish speaking, her expression suddenly changes. She quickly controls her body and creates distance. Then, she involuntarily opens her mouth, and the recently absorbed spiritual power is forcefully expelled, forming a green sphere of light that shoots into the sky. Soon after, one of her eyes returns to normal. At this moment, Zhuang Xiaoran regains some consciousness, but she realizes she can't control her head or body. Mommy curses inwardly, realizing that the power she just recovered is being wasted. The thin protector observes this scene but doesn't understand what's happening. He then asks about the intelligence gathering. The fat protector responds. Based on the analysis of the elbow strike just now, Mummy's speed and strength are both class A. That leaves defense. He wants to personally test it. Mummy's face turns ferocious as she concentrates all her efforts on suppressing Zhuang Xiaoran's consciousness. Her pupils slowly return to black. 
the Thin Protector has approached her, and he unsheaths his sword, invoking Icy Prison. Immediately, an ice wall rises, releasing a chilling aura that freezes Mummy in place. However, after a moment, she breaks free from the ice, surrounded by demonic energy. The Thin Protector quickly retreats to attract her attention, while the Fat Protector suddenly appears and launches a surprise attack from behind. With a successful strike, the Thin Protector doesn't linger in battle and quickly creates distance. Standing with one hand holding the sword, he points it towards the sky. Suddenly, dozens of black spikes appear around Mummy and swiftly converge on him. As the sword energy of the Thin Protector descends, the attack is unleashed, ink spikes. The spikes continuously bombard the target. After a while, the dust settles, and calm is restored. Then, Mummy's voice emerges from within. How laughable, do you really think you can defeat me with such meter skills? It is evident that these moves haven't caused much damage to her. The Thin Protector, witnessing this scene, can't help but sigh. Mummy's defense is also class A. Her toughness is truly deserving of its reputation. He turns his head towards the Fat Protector, who has just finished charging. Black spheres appear in both of his hands. At this moment, Mummy attempts to rush forward but finds her body immobilized. She realizes that she has been trapped within a formation. This is the big move the Fat Protector has been preparing. Hidden Seal, Heaven Earth Dual Seal. After the formation is activated, not only is Mummy unable to move her body, but her consciousness also falls into slumber. She kneels on the ground and enters a state of unconsciousness. However, she proves to be even stronger than anticipated. The formation can only restrain her for two minutes. The Fat Protector can't help but exclaim how strong she is. What kind of experiences did she have in her lifetime to become this powerful? The situation becomes troublesome. Mummy must have cultivated for thousands of years. Although she lacks consciousness, she has entered a protective hibernation state. Short-term attacks have no effect on her. It's unexpected that Mummy is so formidable that even Class A protectors can't deal with her. The commander inquires about the situation through the aircraft and learns that the souls have been released, and Mummy has been controlled. The souls in the sky, if left to wander for a long time, will gradually dissipate, and those who have lost their souls will die permanently. They are currently trapped in a dilemma. However, the citizens must be saved. Han Longkue, with a solemn expression, asks if there is a solution. The protector truthfully responds that there is indeed one method, exile. Upon hearing this word, Han Longkue breaks out in a cold sweat and the subordinates behind her cover their mouths in disbelief. She had heard from her colleagues before that there is a mysterious jade hidden in the headquarters capable of sealing a large number of ancient demonic spirits within it, allowing humans to maintain control and dominance over them. It is also referred to as the Third World. However, to exile Mummy there, they would need to report to higher authorities, and taking unauthorized action would certainly result in punishment. Han Longkue makes up her mind, furrowing her brows, and immediately declares that they will proceed with the exile. The subordinates stand there stunned, reminding her that they haven't reported yet. Han Longkue's voice resounds once again, stating that lives are at stake and that she will take full responsibility. There is no time to waste. The protector confirms once again, and upon receiving the same response, he no longer hesitates. He begins to form seals with his hands, and several faint yellow rings of light expand outward. He recites an incantation, and as the words fall, a golden light shoots out from his fingertips, piercing straight into the sky. At that moment, a rift opens in the sky, resembling a whirlpool, and golden rays of light cascade down. Meanwhile, the Tang Ka below has located the area based on the coordinates, and the red thread on their compass happens to float in this direction. Tang Ka gazes solemnly at the sky, surprised by the incredible coincidence. Immediately, the vortex grows larger, and a massive head emerges slowly from within. The head opens its large mouth, and a ball of golden light gathers inside. Then, it shoots straight down, enveloping the unconscious mummy. Under the illumination of the light pillar, the barriers binding mummy crack and shatter, and her body soars straight into the sky. At the same time, the thread on the compass reaches the target's side. Watching this scene, Tang Ka feels somewhat puzzled. Why would the same curse mark appear on her? Upon closer inspection, he realizes that it resembles the motorbike girl he passed by tonight. Without hesitation, Tang Ka activates the golden nether eye and scans, discovering that her soul has merged with the demonic spirit, making her half-human. This is the first time Tang Ka has encountered such a situation, and he finds it fascinating. He immediately flies into the light pillar. This is a rare opportunity, as he has long wanted to go to that world. Without hesitation, he arrives in front of the giant beast and flies inside. The onlookers widen their eyes perplexed by the sight. Has that kid gone mad? A subordinate cautiously asks if they can ask the protector to release Tang Ka. However, Han Longkue denies the request, stating that it is a place from which there is no return. No human has ever entered, 
and they don't know what significant consequences it might bring. Even if he comes out alive, I'll slaughter him. That little brat never listens, she adds. Meanwhile, in the heaven-flipping world, a giant light pillar also illuminates. The demonic spirits below are observing everything. Lei-in, one of the demonic spirits, catches sight of the massive light pillar in the sky. In this dark and sunless place, he has lost count of how many years he has spent fighting other demonic spirits to become stronger. Finally, he has waited for this moment. Now, he rushes into the sky, secretly thinking to leave and slaughter a city after departing, then settle the score with the old monster who sealed him. However, just as he reached out his hand, his arm was suddenly entwined by fierce flames. Then, a burst of energy erupted within the barrier, engulfing and incinerating him. After the light fades, all that remains of his once intact body is an eyeball. As long as one organ remains, I can restore my original form using my special ability. But at that moment, he collided with someone's face. The person then ruthlessly slapped him with an expression of disgust, muttering something unpleasant. How sickening, Tang Ka lands on the ground, following the girl's figure. However, after scanning around, he realizes that she is not nearby. He stands there, inwardly frustrated, but catches the attention of a demonic spirit named Wild Boar. This demonic spirit, resembling a wild boar, looks at Tang Ka, and saliva drips onto the ground. Initially, he just wanted to see who the unfortunate soul locked up here was, but he never expected it to be a human. This is simply a delicious gift delivered right to him. Little does he know that the boy before him is also gleaming with excitement, evilly staring back at him. Meanwhile, Zhuang Xiaoran lies on the ground, and the features of the mummy gradually disappear. After a moment, she suddenly sits up and shouts that her order is going to be late. In her memory, she should be delivering food and got hit by something. Later, she woke up briefly and saw green fireworks. However, she realizes that she doesn't have a single scratch on her body and has ended up in this unfamiliar place. Looking around, besides the dilapidated houses, there is no one in sight. Just as she wanders in confusion, she remains unaware that danger is approaching. A demonic spirit opens its mouth, preparing to bite down. Returning to Tang Ka's side, the human and the monster are running frantically on the street. Tang Ka remains calm and composed while sitting above, as if it is natural for a human to appear in this situation. Wild Boar, on the other hand, is drenched in cold sweat, afraid to stop. It's not only because the harbinger of calamity sits on top of his head, but also because there are countless terrifying demonic spirits chasing them from behind. A gaping mouth full of blood is about to bite down on Zhuang Xiaoran. Just then, she seems to sense the danger and quickly lowers her body to dodge it. Everything happens in an instant, as she watches her agile reaction and speed, she doesn't understand how she managed to do it. She then turns her head towards the rooftop, where the demonic spirit has just retracted its neck and is sinisterly staring at her. Zhuang Xiaoran freezes on the spot, internally cursing at what kind of ghostly thing that is. How disgusting. After a moment of fear, she turns around to escape, but the demonic spirit suddenly jumps in front of her and stands up. This is a type of demonic spirit called a giant salamander. It is able to live on land and in the water and can travel extremely quickly underwater. It possesses eye-like marks on its back that can create illusions, causing its victims to relive the most terrifying pains in their lives, thereby rendering them unable to retaliate. Immediately after, Zhuang Xiaoran's eyes become unfocused, and she falls into her own memories. It was her first time crying when she fell down while learning to ride a bicycle as a child. Her parents had an argument over their parenting approaches, but their family was still happy and harmonious. However, her father fell ill, and she cried by his bedside for the second time. Her mother worked while struggling to cover medical expenses and support the family. But luckily, her father recovered after three years and returned to their previous joyful state. Unfortunately, the good times didn't last long as her father fell ill again. Unable to bear the burden, her mother started a relationship with someone else. Watching her mother get into a car and leave with the man, it was her third time crying. Her father couldn't hold on this time and passed away. At her father's funeral, Zhuang Xiaoran shed her final tears. From then on, she became an orphan, taken care of by various relatives in rotation. However, over time, those so-called relatives started to treat her with disdain. In the end, a few of them discussed and decided to send her to be with her mother. However, the first words her long-lost mother said to her before leaving are something Zhuang Xiaoran will never forget in her lifetime. Just before she left, she learned that her mother's current husband's business had failed, and now they were hiding from debt in the countryside. Watching her mother's exhausted appearance, Zhuang Xiaoran's deep-seated resentment towards her faded considerably. She didn't ask for much, just yearned for a mother's embrace. 
However, her mother's next words left her stunned in place. Go back. I don't have any money to give you. Hearing those words, Xuan Xiaoran felt extreme disappointment in her heart. From that moment on, she could no longer remember the woman's face. She wanted to cry but couldn't shed a tear. She could only feel a piercing pain in her chest. From that moment on, she saw the reality clearly. Money was more important than love or family. It was at that moment she resolved to work hard and earn a lot of money. At the age of 15, she learned how to work, even enduring the disdain of relatives to borrow a place to stay in order to save money. She learned self-defense and even worked consecutive hours on just one piece of bread. At the end of each day, despite feeling exhausted, seeing her bank balance made her happy. But now, she couldn't help but doubt if it was all worth it. Even if that woman regretted it, what difference would it make? She was still alone, without family, friends, or even dreams. What was the meaning of her existence? Shuang Xiaoran looked at her hands once again tears streaming down her face under the hallucinatory influence of the demonic spirit. She gave up her will to survive. Just as the moment seemed ripe, the demonic spirit opened its large mouth, ready to bite down on the girl, but then, a fist the size of a sandbag struck its face. The demonic spirit was sent flying, and the owner of the arm was none other than Tang Ka. Shuang Xiaoran stared blankly at this scene. You're still alive. That's great. The man before her became the sole light in her eyes. As she looked at the man who came to rescue her, all her grievances and fears found release in this moment. Shuang Xiaoran suddenly burst into loud sobs. The wild boar, seeing this scene, tried to seize the opportunity to escape but was caught by Tang Ka. He asked how much time was left before the exit above closed, and there was still half a pot of tea's worth of time. Seems satisfactory and enough for me to play for two minutes, he said. The giant salamander behind quietly stood up and then launched a surprise attack, using the same move in front of him. Seeing Tang Ka momentarily stunned, it opened its mouth, ready to bite, but it was met with a merciless slap. What the fuck do you think you're doing? Don't breathe out right in front of my face. So disgusting, it is being beaten up severely due to its bad breath problem. The wild boy stood beside, looking dumbfounded. Then, a rumbling sound grew closer and closer. At this moment, Tang Ka became slightly more serious. He instructed Zhuang Xiaoran not to move and said, Now it's my entertainment time. His left hand made a crackling sound, and blue light emanated from the joints of his hand's backbones. It traveled up his arm to his head. After the connection was complete, faint blue arcs appeared in the air. Tang Ka then chuckled and said, This move has limited use in the human world due to its destructive power, but here, I can do as I please. He smirked and with lightning swirling around his arm, formed three lightning balls. He then flung them towards the incoming demonic spirits with great force. The lightning balls collided and merged with the demonic spirits, exploding in the midst of the demon horde. The surrounding space was instantly filled with the power of thunder and lightning. The demonic spirits trembled and roared under the barrage of lightning. The range of the explosion continued to expand, leaving corpses scattered on the ground in various positions. Tang Ka dispelled the magic on his body and turned to look at Zhuang Xiaoran. Before she could answer, he embraced her and lightly tapped the ground with his toes. A tornado of time swept around them, carrying them into the air and arriving at the entrance. The wild boar watched as the star of misfortune left and finally breathed a sigh of relief. However, unable to contain his curiosity, he wondered about Tang Ka's identity. He could perform spells without talismans, something he had never seen or even heard of before. Who exactly was this person? Meanwhile, in another location, several demonic spirits were also staring in the direction Tang Ka had left. A female demonic spirit asked if she should investigate, but another demonic spirit replied, No need. No one is allowed to leave the presence of the Lord. As their gaze shifted towards the shrinking hole, a yellow glow grew brighter inside. Once inside, they could clearly see a yellow crystal and the so-called Lord within it, a headless demon king with mysterious black circles all over his body. In another realm, Han Longkue is still cursing Tang Ka out of anger. However, his subordinates witnessed an incredible scene. From the mouth of the giant beast in the sky, a hand slowly reached out. Tang Ka, with Zhuang Xiaoran in tow, crossed the barrier. Just as they emerged, Zhuang Xiaoran suddenly froze, and her irises began to fill with black. In the instant the giant beast closed its mouth, the two of them timely returned to the human world. The giant beast slowly retracted its head and disappeared into the sky. Tang Ka landed on the rooftop, still holding her in his arms. The protector, witnessing this scene, couldn't help but angrily reprimand, You, kid, we went through great trouble to banish her, and now you've brought her back again? Tang Ka retorted, I've done you a big favor, and you dare to shout at me? However, at this moment, Mummy's double horns emerged and his pupils completely turned yellow. Tang Ka was momentarily stunned but then slapped his hand down, shattering the horns directly. Shuang Xiaoran was also knocked unconscious by the slap. 
The protector exclaimed in astonishment, knocked out with just one slap, we struggled for so long to control her, and he finished it with one slap, and just now, she had the aura of a mummy, but now she has transformed into a human. However, since it involves humans, they have no right to interfere. The two of them then performed a teleportation spell to prepare to return. However, the chubby one still had doubts about how Tang Khan knew she was still human. The skinny one explained that there was a type of eye technique, a secret technique exclusive to Taoism, and it was not simple for him to have mastered it at such a young age. After the two left, Tang Ka looked at the unconscious Xuan Xiaoran, feeling somewhat at a loss. Just then, a roar came from behind. Han Longkui, with a dark face, said, you have three minutes to come back, otherwise, you'll bear the consequences. Tang Ka broke out in a cold sweat and quickly forced a smile. Upon returning to headquarters, Zhuang Xiaoran was placed in the research room, where two researchers were examining her physical condition. Several people outside the glass were also watching this place. A subordinate reported that over a hundred people had died at the construction site, but there were no casualties elsewhere. Han Longkui became furious upon hearing this and directed his anger towards Tang Ka. Tang Ka hadn't expected that what was originally just an A-level mission had now turned into an S-level. He quickly explained that he had accepted the order and went there but it seemed like Mummy had sensed it and left early. Then he looked at Zhuang Xiaoran in confusion, unsure if she was now human or a demon. One of the researchers held a large syringe, preparing to draw blood for testing. Even if the needle was bent, it still couldn't penetrate. Then, another researcher appeared with a power drill. Finally, they managed to extract a drop and carefully placed it on the instrument. Tang Ka and the others watched this scene through the synchronized video feed. Data analysis showed that there was no significant difference from an ordinary person. However, in the blink of an eye, the originally red blood was unexpectedly covered and fused with green. The researchers were stunned by this sight. At that moment, the glass containing the blood shattered followed by the synchronized screen turning blue. Han Longkui quickly asked what had happened. The researcher hurriedly replied that the blood had undergone a mutation, probably due to being separated from the host for too long. Then they synchronized the perspective of the researcher, revealing that the laboratory was in complete disarray with machines exploding and emitting black smoke. They hadn't expected that the power of just a drop of blood could be so immense. The current inference is that the girl, when conscious of herself, is no different from an ordinary person. However, assuming that mummy's brainwaves have taken over the host, the human body undergoes a transformation and becomes a demonic spirit. The ultimate conclusion is soul fusion in a shared body. At this moment, Tang Ka also understood why the protector couldn't tell that she was human. Suddenly, he heard someone calling his name and turned to see Han Longkui, who was uncharacteristically smiling at him. He then praised Tang Ka's abilities, saying, you're amazing, you knocked out mummy with just one slap. After flattering him, she revealed his purpose. Zhuang Xiaoran is now a soul fusion in a shared body. The Demonic Spirit City Bureau does not allow the detention of demonic spirits, especially in S Level 1. So, until the higher-ups come up with a solution, you will be in charge of the girl. Upon hearing this, Tang Ka broke into a sweat and quickly waved his hands, saying, don't mess around. Big sister, I promised my master not to have any involvement with women, even if we live together. However, Han Longkui reassured him not to worry about his master. She would take care of the matter. She even threatened that if Tang Ka didn't agree, she would send him back to the mountain to continue his cultivation. Upon hearing this, Tang Ka hesitated for a moment but immediately regained his firm gaze, stating that he was a responsible man and would see it through. And so, the matter was settled. Tang Ka walked on his way back home, sighing inwardly, feeling that the days ahead would not be as easy. However, at that moment, a dense network of red threads appeared behind him, and the other end of the threads extended into the distance through the high-rise buildings. It led to a mountain with swirling clouds, where a dojo stood on the mountaintop. The final destination of the threads was a massive compass. Below the compass, a giant tortoise lay, and above it, a faint figure appeared. Just then, several threads on the compass snapped one after another, catching the attention of the person above. He looked in the direction of Tang Ka and muttered to himself, the threads have actually been severed. This man is the supreme master of esoteric Taoism in history, Li Yi. Surprisingly, his mount was an ageless giant tortoise. At that moment, Li Yi was on the phone. The person on the other end, referred to as Baby Long by him, was Han Longkui. Upon hearing this title, Han Longkui erupted in anger and yelled, Li Yi, you are never serious. Li Yi, with a smile on his face, deduced the purpose of the phone call, which was related to recent events involving Tang Ka. Han Longkui, shocked, asked how he knew. Li Yi, feeling proud like a transcendent figure, simply said he calculated it. Enraged, Han Longkui abruptly ended the call, and the phone emitted a beeping sound. Li Yi, however, felt quite satisfied and secretly praised her, 
saying, not bad, holding a high position, yet still the same temper. The giant turtle was somewhat worried about Tang Ka's situation. After the red thread snapped a few moments ago, it suggested taking the opportunity to perform a divination. However, Tang Ka calmly replied that there was no rush and it was still too early. Just a few threads snapping indicated that there was still hope for Tang Ka. Meanwhile, within Zhuang Xiaoran's consciousness, she transformed into a pure white figure. Looking at her own appearance, she was puzzled. The surroundings were all hazy black. Just as she was filled with confusion, a figure appeared behind her. Zhuang Xiaoran turned to look and was surprised to see Mummy. Seeing this sinister face, she immediately recalled the ghostly figure that appeared during the car accident. Mummy, at that moment, remained silent. He raised his arm slightly and then gently moved his finger. Zhuang Xiaoran's body suddenly became extremely blurred, and the white components dispersed into streaks of light. Suddenly, she woke up from her bed, wondering if it was all just a dream. However, as she looked around and realized she was in an unfamiliar place, with her clothes changed and a refreshing yet cool sensation, she blushed uncontrollably. Unable to resist her thoughts going to a different place, she suddenly realized something was wrong. First, there was a car accident, then she saw a green fireworks monster chasing her, followed by a nauseating creature pursuing her, and finally, a man descending from the sky appeared and saved her, carrying her into the sky. Thinking about that boy who was like a ray of light, she couldn't help but doubt if that young man truly existed or if he was just a figment of her desire for protection. At this moment, Zhuang Xiaoran's expression became somewhat desolate. She couldn't help but think how nice it would be if there really was such a man to protect her. However, right at that moment, the door opened, and the man she had just thought of appeared before her, holding a toothbrush and wearing a battle robe. Zhuang Xiaoran's mentality collapsed upon seeing this. Did he just strip off her clothes himself? The person she had envisioned in her heart turned out to be this kind of person. Zhuang Xiaoran grabbed a pillow and threw it at him, ignoring Tang Ka's anger. Then she swiftly moved in front of him. However, there was a loud thud, and Zhuang Xiaoran was seen trembling and sitting on the ground, hugging her legs. Tang Ka was somewhat angry. I kindly saved you, and you attacked me instead? Zhuang Xiaoran cursed him as a pervert, asking who gave him permission to take off her clothes. Tang Ka hurriedly explained that it was because she was drenched and he was afraid she would catch a cold, so he took a shower as well. Upon hearing the word shower, Zhuang Xiaoran was instantly disgusted and gnashed her teeth, questioning him again. Tang Ka felt that the misunderstanding was deepening and called out for the person behind him to come out. Zhuang Xiaoran followed his gaze and was astonished to see a bulky green-skinned monster. Unaware of the situation, Zhuang Xiaoran heard that it was this creature who helped her with the shower, and she immediately hid behind the bed, roaring in anger. The demonic spirit, realizing that it was being rejected, started shedding tears and squatted down, crying loudly. Tang Ka quickly approached to console it and asked Zhuang Xiaoran to apologize. He explained that despite its appearance, it was actually just a gentle five-year-old girl in human years and a docile type of demonic spirit. Zhuang Xiaoran, upon realizing her own outburst, quickly apologized. However, she still couldn't understand the concept of demonic spirits. Tang Ka told her that in this world, humans and demonic spirits coexist, but ordinary people are simply unaware of it, and there is one inside your body. Zhuang Xiaoran still didn't understand, full of confusion. Tang Ka suddenly felt a headache, and asked the little demonic spirit to explain it to her. The little demonic spirit followed the instructions, approached Zhuang Xiaoran, and greeted her before starting to explain. In fact, a long time ago, demonic spirits existed in this world, and most demonic spirits saw humans as food. At first, humans didn't have the ability to fight against demonic spirits, so they were always the victims, gradually being devoured. It wasn't until many years later that some individuals with special abilities appeared, capable of fighting against demonic spirits. They formed an organization called Esoteric and took on the mission of protecting humanity. From then on, humans gained the ability to balance demonic spirits, and demonic spirits were not easily able to cause harm. However, this also made the rulers of humans wary of Esoteric's power, and Esoteric faced continuous persecution. Subsequently, demonic spirits took advantage of the opportunity and launched a large-scale war against the Alliance. At that time, Esoteric was already powerless to fight back. Just at this crucial moment, the founder of Tao Esoteric used a mysterious jade to seal most of the demonic spirits within it. This artifact is called the Heaven Flipping Seal. After this incident, demonic spirits and humans signed a contract for peaceful coexistence. Later, the Demonic Spirit City Bureau was established to supervise the remaining demonic spirits that might pose a threat to humanity. Zhuang Xiaoran then asked about the demonic spirit inside her body. 
but the little demonic spirit didn't know either and could only ask her to inquire with Tang Ka. At that moment, Tang Ka happened to walk over and looked at Zhuang Xiaoran. It's time to take care of it. Tang Ka's voice came again. Go to the bed. Zhuang Xiaoran blushed and became somewhat panicked, asking him what he intended to do. Tang Ka immediately explained, the demonic aura breeding inside you is growing stronger. If left unchecked, your consciousness will be completely consumed by the demonic spirit. Zhuang Xiaoran thought of the monster that appeared in her dream. Could it be the same one? Zhuang Xiaoran saw Tang Ka forming strange hand seals, followed by an evil smile. He mentioned that he hadn't had a chance to use this move before and it was a good opportunity to practice. He then pointed towards Zhuang Xiaoran's forehead, and a burst of golden light flashed. Immediately after, Zhuang Xiaoran fell onto the bed. The little demonic spirit was about to ask what happened when unexpectedly, Tang Ka also collapsed to the ground. In the world of consciousness, Zhuang Xiaoran transformed into pure white once again. Then she slowly opened her eyes, but this time she felt extremely weak, unable to move even a little. She heard Tang Ka's voice saying, the reason you can't move is that your consciousness is gradually disappearing, and the consciousness is represented by those white flowing lights. If your consciousness completely disappears, it means total death. However, he reassured her not to worry and said that as long as they defeat that guy before her consciousness disappears, everything will be fine. Mommy was also present, observing the scene. Tang Ka smirked and walked over, finding it amusing to fight with his consciousness. Mommy didn't know what he was thinking when he approached, but there was a hint of seriousness in his gaze. Tang Ka then stood in front of him, looking up and remarking that his consciousness seemed to have recovered. He suggested they start moving and have a fight. Mummy took the initiative, landing a hit on Tang Ka's face, followed by a lightning-fast punch striking his head. Tang Ka took a few steps back, and a large hole appeared in his head from the impact. Mummy prepared to continue the assault, but in that split second, his body instinctively triggered the escape response. He retreated a distance and felt a sense of astonishment. Was this person truly that strong? He seemed like an ordinary person, so why was his entire body emitting an extremely dangerous signal? Tang Ka's face was filled with anger. The gap in his head wound slowly healed. You know, when you hit someone, you should aim for the face. You damn bastard, truly worthy of being an S-class. You actually managed to injure me. But now, it's my turn to strike back. He was about to make a move when a larger version of Mummy appeared behind him and tightly restrained him. This was in Mummy's world of consciousness where he could create countless replicas of himself. Although they weren't as fast as Tang Ka, they were nearly as powerful. As soon as the words were spoken, numerous Mummy replicas rushed out from all directions. Tang Ka looked at this scene without panic. So, they're just clones. How boring, he exerted force with both hands breaking free from the restraints, and let out a roar, revealing his true form. Looking at the giant-sized Tang Ka, Mummy felt a sense of impending doom. He appeared as small as a fly beneath that figure and desperately wanted to recall his replicas. The clones received the command and quickly retreated, but it was too late now. Tang Ka raised his arm and struck with tremendous force. The shockwave swept through the scattering replicas. Mummy couldn't believe what he was witnessing. He never expected that a single strike would annihilate his entire army, but he didn't have time to dwell on it. Tang Ka stood there, smiling wickedly, and said, Do you think your pitiful clones can scare me to death? Let me teach you a lesson and show you what invincibility truly means. Mummy was then knocked unconscious by a devastating blow to his head. Shuang Xiaoran's consciousness was gradually recovering. At this moment, Tang Ka urged her to imagine a container and seal Mummy inside it. He was running out of time and couldn't stay in her consciousness for too long. However, Shuang Xiaoran was caught in a dilemma. What should she use? A handbag? Necklace? Ring? Finally, when Tang Ka was about to dissipate, everything was finally settled. Tang Ka, at this moment, turned his head and saw a giant lipstick floating in midair. Mummy was imprisoned within the lipstick. After sealing Mummy last night for her own safety, Zhuang Xiaoran had no choice but to stay here. However, the next day, Tang Ka and the little demonic spirit were awakened by screams. When they arrived in Zhuang Xiaoran's room, they discovered that there was a wriggling bone tail behind her. Zhuang Xiaoran was on the verge of collapse. What the hell is this thing? Why is it growing on my butt? Tang Ka, on the other hand, thought it was pretty cool and expressed his desire to have one too. But as he spoke, he realized something was wrong. He turned his head and saw the bone tail aiming straight at him. Tang Ka reacted swiftly, dodging the attack by turning around. However, the bone tail changed its direction in midair and stabbed towards him once again. Thus began a continuous cycle of attack and evasion between Tang Ka and the bone tail. Tang Ka leaped into the air, and the bone tail followed his every move. Upon landing, Tang Ka came up with a plan. Seizing the opportunity, he rushed towards Zhuang Xiaoran but suddenly slowed down as he approached. Then he bent down and squatted. 
just as the bone spike was about to hit Zhuan Xiaorian, it instantly stopped in its tracks. Tang Ka confirmed his speculation and found it quite interesting. She then tested the sharpness of the bone spike and went through several rounds. To her surprise, Zhuang Xiaorian discovered that she could actually control it. Moreover, when facing attacks from the little demonic spirit, the bone spike automatically protected her and blocked all the attacks. In the end, they concluded that the strength of the tail alone could reach B-level. But Zhuang Xiaorian had a look of disdain on her face. If I go out like this, people will think I'm a monster. Then Tang Ka came up with an idea. He suggested that she concentrate and try to retract it. Focus all your energy and silently repeat pull it back for me dot. Surprisingly, the bone tail was obedient. Pull it back for me, Zhuang Xiaoran said, and it slowly disappeared. Tang Ka's phone vibrated, and he thought it was some good news. However, his expression suddenly changed as he opened the message and realized it was from Han Longkui, instructing him to terminate other missions. The little demonic spirit noticed his displeasure and asked what was wrong. Tang Ka held up his phone and said with a disappointed look, I'm unemployed now. Upon hearing this, Zhuang Xiaoran immediately came up with an idea. We can take on private jobs. I'll handle the orders, and we can become partners, working together to eliminate monsters. How about a 70-30th split? After hearing her proposal, Tang Ka's frown turned into a smile, revealing his big white teeth. As long as you can get private jobs, I promise to cooperate with you. Meanwhile, outside an old and dilapidated mansion in the suburbs, a few mischievous kids arrived. In order to join this small group, although the boy was scared, he agreed to the request to play hide and seek inside the mansion. However, after he entered, the other kids quickly returned to the city, leaving him alone inside. The boy tremblingly searched inside with a flashlight. Suddenly, a figure appeared in front of him, and the ghostly figure rushed towards him. It quickly caught up and said, leave. Startled, the boy screamed and ran backward. But ahead, another terrifying figure blocked his path. Don't go, play with me, it said. The scene shifts to the next day. Zhuang Xiaoran, who had been posting online to take orders, heard a knock on the door. When she opened it, she saw an unfamiliar girl introducing herself as yesterday's little demonic spirit, Tusky. The stark contrast between their appearances made Zhuang Xiaoran unable to bear looking at it and instantly lost confidence in herself. Tusky then explained that it was the ability of the spirit pouch to envelop the body and transform into a human form and Tang Ka specially selected this skin for her. Upon hearing this, Zhuang Xiaoran became furious and angrily scolded Tang Ka for letting a little girl wear such a thing. However, Tang Ka innocently claimed that his master had said it would make her more likable, and the spirit pouch was not easy to come by. Although he didn't know the benefits of having two lumps of flesh like that, Zhuang Xiaoran was left speechless looking at this silly man. Meanwhile, in a luxurious mansion, a subordinate hastily reported that the three children had been found but the young master's whereabouts were not discovered in the old mansion. Strangely, the phone's location was traced to that place. Upon using a thermal sensor to scan, not even a rat was found inside. The man pondered for a moment and wondered if it was a demonic spirit. He decided to contact the organization and offer the highest price to seek help from the most powerful demonic spirit bureau in the city. He wanted his precious son to be rescued. The scene shifts again. The next day, as Zhuang Xiaoran was getting dressed, she heard Tang Ka's voice. I didn't expect you to be capable. You've already taken an order early in the morning. Zhuang Xiaoran was completely confused as she didn't know what was going on. She quickly went downstairs, where two burly men were already waiting by the car. She noticed a faint green aura emanating from them. Tang Ka smirked at the corner of his mouth. It seems like a big job. The vehicle quickly arrived at a magnificent and grand estate. Looking at the imposing gate, Tang Ka couldn't help but exclaim. Did they raise dinosaurs here? But when he turned around, he was astonished to see the two burly men actually taking off their clothes. Sorry, we don't want to ruin our clothes, they're expensive. It's all the boss's idea. Only if you defeat us within five minutes will you be qualified to see him. Immediately, the two men were surrounded by green light, and then they transformed into their true forms. They revealed themselves as two fierce and ferocious turbo wolves with menacing eyes. They lunged at Tang Ka without hesitation. However, Tang Ka remained calm and agilely jumped into the air. Seeing that their first attack was ineffective, the turbo wolves attempted to surround him from the front and back. Tang Ka became a bit more serious and extended his palm from his pocket. Initially, he thought using his feet would be enough, but suddenly, a burst of golden light exploded. Zhuang Xiaoran, who was watching from below, was forced to step back by the imposing aura. Within the golden light, 
Tang Ka engaged in lightning-fast combat with the Turbo Wolves. In an instant, he grabbed both of their wolf heads and, before they could react, forcefully smashed them together. The once fierce and ferocious faces were twisted and deformed by the impact before crashing onto the ground with a thud. Shortly after, Tang Ka pressed down the other Turbo Wolf and rubbed it against the ground. The Turbo Wolf initially didn't want to surrender. But in this moment, it felt a chilling sense of fear. The oppressive force brought by Tang Ka's seemingly ordinary punch was enough to destroy a city. It quickly wagged its tail, indicating surrender. Shuang Xiaoran watched this scene in astonishment. From the moment they started fighting until now, only five seconds had passed. The two men were soon taken to the boss's room. Meanwhile, a masked teenager next to them wanted to test Tang Ka's strength and boasted about causing the scars on the Turbo Wolf. He claimed that defeating them would only take two seconds. The boss remained silent, evidently approving of the action. I wonder if my sword is faster or your fist, the masked teenager said, and instantly drew his sword, slashing towards Tang Ka. This move was called Flying Fish Rising Sun. In the blink of an eye, a dense array of sword lights sealed off Tang Ka's surroundings. However, the next second, the teenager was sent flying. Tang Ka retracted his fist. I hate impolite people the most. The boss clapped his hands at this moment, indicating that this job was undoubtedly Tang Ka's. He then recounted the story of the boy's disappearance, and tears welled up in his eyes. Help me find my son. I'll pay you whatever amount you want. Tang Ka was delighted. As long as the opponent is strong. Zhuang Xiaoran, on the other hand, gleaming with excitement, said, I'll take this job and help you find him. But just as she finished speaking, a young boy walked in. Zhuang Xiaoran turned her head to look, and on the boy's back was a ghostly figure. The boy's eyes were lifeless, resembling a vegetable, while the attached soul seemed to be in agony. The boss hurriedly ran over, asking if the boy was possessed. Tang Ka explained, part of his soul has been lost, and if we don't find it tonight, he'll die. Upon hearing the severity of the situation, the boss instantly clung to Tang Ka's leg, begging for help. It was at this moment that Zhuang Xiaoran noticed something, pointing to the boy's ear and saying there was something there. Tang Ka approached the bed and used his ghost revealer instant skill, revealing several tentacles wriggling inside the boy's ear. Then, at lightning speed, the creature escaped. Tang Ka was about to chase after it, but the masked teenager sliced the ghostly entity in half with his sword. Looking at the small black bean in his palm, Tang Ka furrowed his brow. Didn't they already wipe out the entire clan? Meanwhile, the scene shifted to a house filled with the sounds of birds and the fragrance of flowers, where a man stood holding a pipe, muttering to himself, One bean has gone bad. The person who can force out my bean must be from the same school of Taoism as me. I'm afraid we'll meet soon. Back on the Tang Ka side, the adolescent boy takes off his mask. How dangerous it is. My elegant eagle bear tiger face can only be shown to the strong. As an employed wanderer, it's dangerous for my identity to be exposed. I am wanderer Chiu Zin. But Tang Ka doesn't bother to look. He takes Shuang Xiaoran and walks out. Destination. An ancient mansion. 